Oh, look at this, guys. Number nine, 3.5 volts, while the other ones are around 3.4. Charging with 60 amps almost, 3.5 kilowatts. I think number nine has got a contact or terminal issue. High resistance between the bus bar and terminal, it looks like. So what I will do is um, I will wait until the clouds are coming back and the current 63 only until the clouds are coming back and the current goes down and then I will just loosen the screws of terminal number nine of both positive negative and wiggle yeah wiggle the cell a little bit so it cleans the contacts underneath and then we tighten them back up again and it should be fine that's what I've done in the past I really need to decommission this battery and check all the terminals and bus bars. But for now, it is what it is, right? So now we are charging with 1.8 amps only. The BMS doesn't even show anything. And you can see here the deviation is at 5 millivolt. So once there's current flowing, I mean serious current, number nine is peaking up and down. When I discharge, it is very low. When I charge, it is very high. But now it is in line with all the other ones. But this would be an ideal situation now to um, disconnect number nine a bit and clean the contacts. See, now I'm charging with 13 amps and number nine is already high. Almost 3.4 volts. 33 millivolt deviation only. But it's rising already. Oh, here again, 60 amps now coming in. And 3.525 we have, while the other ones are at 3.4. 140 millivolt deviation, that's not good. 60 amps outside, man. Yeah, guys, look at this. I finally got myself a little suitcase and a digital torque wrench I bought from AliExpress here. After a long time of consideration, I bought one. Yeah, I thought with all these battery connections now, it is actually better if I have one and be a little bit more consistent with my terminal connections. So this one runs with two AAA batteries inside and has a couple of buttons here at the front. So this one turns it on and with the positive and negative button you can actually set a threshold. So I set this one here to 5 newton meters now and you can adjust this in 0.1 newton meter steps. I think 5 newton meters is the okay torque now for the terminals here for the EV batteries, right? Because it says in the manual 8 newton meter is the maximum torque before the actual terminal shares off. So I think five Newton meters is totally fine to torque them down. And I went only with the one quarter inch connections here for this torque wrench. So it connects to my small ratchet here and on the other side to a socket. As you can see here, the torque wrench is from 0 0.3 Newton meter up to 30 Newton meter. So this is the smallest one they had. And there's also a manual and this calibration certificate here, which I was really surprised about. There it is. And it shows you all the different torques, 6, 18, 30 Newton meters. And they tested it uh, five times. And this is the tolerance they measured, the deviation and the value in percent then. See there it has the serial number of the device which is here printed on the side as well. So it looks like at six Newton meter here, we have, we have 0.12 Newton meter tolerance and 0.36 at 18 and 0.6 Newton meter at 30 Newton meter settings. So the trace mode gives you the live view of how much torque you actually apply at the moment. And the other one is the PTOP, which saves up to, I think 30, um, well, we should not speculate here on the channel. Peak trace, trace memory, 
Ah, P50 actually, the last 50 readings, it saves in this mode. So I have set the, I have set the maximum torque to five Newton meter now. When we start cranking the ratchet now, you can see we've got a green light and the torque is increasing until we hit, I think, 80% and then it turns yellow and flashes. And once we hit the five, it beeps. There we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, then we have reached the maximum torque. So it warns you before you reach your set torque, so you don't go over. Yeah, 80%. So you know you're coming close. And then once you hit the five, it beeps. Then you can release it, done. So the torque wrench was only like $56 or something, but it took ages to get here, I don't know. Sometimes deliveries are very fast from AliExpress down here. They are here within a week and others take months. At least we've got a torque wrench now and we can torque all our bus bars. Okay, let's try one out, shall we? Okay, it's set to five Newton meter. Three, four, five. There we go. Wow, that is tight. Yeah, I thought about getting one of these mechanical um, torque wrenches, but apparently they are not very precise in the lower ranges. So, but I'm not sure how precise this one is. But at least we are consistent now with tightening these nuts. As always, if you are interested, I link this torque wrench down below in the description and on my website as well. Um, well, you can see here in this little box, um, the torque wrench can come with two adapters as well. One goes from one quarter to a half an inch and the other one goes from a quarter inch to three eighths or something. I don't know. But um, there are different options available when you order it. They come with um, adapters to support a larger ratchet if, if you want to use it with another tool. Yeah, and then afterwards you just put it back in the suitcase and it's protected. I like it. Okay, let me start the screen recorder. Okay, there's the positive terminal. Just take this off just a tiny bit. The negative terminal as well. Just enough so I can move the battery around. There. See, it's already fixed. See, it's green. Look at this. There is oxidation under the terminals under the bus bars. Okay, five Newton meter. And we torque it up with the torque wrench. There we go. And here the positive as well. Yep, five. All right. See, there it is fixed. And if you remember and have paid attention to my past videos, I had this issue before. Since we started building this battery in this box there, I always had problems between terminal and bus bar for some reason. And I never could figure it out actually. Well, and then I used um, Paul's, Power Paul's amazing aluminum bus bars here. And we had aluminum terminals and aluminum bus bars and the problem went away. Um, we had the discussion before under some of these videos in the past um, what kind of crease people have used and well if you ask 50 people you probably get 45 answers and some people have actually recommended this one here this electrical crease it's a conductive crease it's called no oxide a special there it is i'll link this down below and on my website as well uh, if you're interested, it looks like it is like like this um, crease. I have used this before. You just you just take a rag and take a tiny bit of that and rub this on the terminal and on the bus bar as well, just in the area where it sits on the terminal, and it gets rid of all oxidation for aluminium permanently, apparently. Well, so far. 
all the contacts I have done with this um, crease now, I haven't had any problems charging the 17 amps and nacelle number nine is now in line with all the other ones it's still a bit high it's not 100 percent so there's definitely some oxidation between terminal and bus bar and by loosening it and moving the whole cell a bit you're rubbing between terminal and bus bar and take off this oxidation and then everything is good for a while yeah but leave your recommendations down below in the description and also share your experience with this sort of stuff do you put anything in between at all? Or do you just connect the bus bars directly to the terminals without any crease in between? All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. Until the next video, guys, stay charged, stay safe. And thank you for watching again. See you then. Bye bye.